Percy's promise. A mob of excited children poured out of Annie and Clarabelle one morning and raced down to the beach. They're the Vicar's Sunday School, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening, but the station master says I can ask you to take them home. Of course I will, promised Percy. The children had a lovely day, but at tea time it got very hot. Dark clouds loomed overhead, then came lightning, thunder and rain. The children only just managed to reach shelter before the deluge began. Annie and Clarabelle stood at the platform. The children scrambled in. Can we go home, please, Station Master? asked the vicar. The Station Master called Percy. Take the children home quickly, please, he ordered. The rain streamed down on Percy's boiler. Ugh! he shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Then he remembered. A promise is a promise, he told himself. So, here goes. His driver was anxious. The river was rising fast. It foamed and swirled fiercely, threatening to flood the country any minute. The rain beat in Percy's face. I wish I could see, I wish I could see, he complained. They left a cutting and found themselves in water. Oh, my wheels, shivered Percy. It's cold. But he struggled on. Whoosh, he hissed. It's sloshing my fire. They stopped and backed the coaches to the cutting and waited while the guard found a telephone. He returned, looking gloomy. We couldn't go back if we wanted, he said. The bridge near the junction is down. The farman went to the guard's van, carrying a hatchet. Hello, said the guard. You look fierce. I want some dry wood for Percy's fire, please. They broke up some boxes, but that did not satisfy the farman. I'll have some of your floorboards, he said. What, my nice floor? grumbled the guard. I only swept it this morning. But he found a hatchet and helped. Soon they had plenty of wood stored in Percy's bunker. His fire burnt well now. He felt warm and comfortable again. Oh dear, thought Percy sadly. Harold's come to laugh at me. Boom! Something thudded on Percy's boiler. Oh! He exclaimed in a muffled voice. That's really too bad. He needn't throw things. His driver unwound a parachute from Percy's indignant front. Harold isn't throwing things at you, he laughed. He's dropping hot drinks for us. They all had a drink of cocoa and felt better. Percy had steam up now. Beep, beep. Thank you, Harold, he whistled. Come on, let's go. The water lapped his wheels. Ugh, he shivered. It crept up and up and up. It reached his ash pan, then it sloshed at his fire. Oosh! Percy was losing steam, but he plunged bravely on. I promised. He panted. I promised. They piled his fire higher with wood and managed to keep him steaming. I, I must do it, he gasped. I must, I must, I must. He made a last great effort and stood exhausted but triumphant on rails which were clear of the flood. He rested to get steam back, then brought the train home. Three cheers for Percy, called the vicar and the children nearly raised the roof. The fat controller arrived in Harold. First, he thanked the men. Harold told me you were a wizard, Percy. He says he can beat you at some things, Percy snorted, but not at being a submarine, he chuckled. I don't know what you've both been playing at, and I won't ask, but I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy happily.